B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atziach. Hello, Achim Ekarim. How are you? I hope you're having a wonderful week. Uh, we want to continue our uh, short series about Pinchas, Pinchas ben Elazar, uh, the son of uh, Aaron Akoen, and uh, we want to report to you another Baruch Hashem, another miracle. We do not stop seeing miracles with people that are doing the will of Hashem. And Be'ezat Hashem will continue a story that we just started just a few months ago. In Parashat Pinchas, as we mentioned, Pinchas did something that no one else was willing to do. And no one else was able to do. Pinchas was zealous for Hashem to such an extent that he was willing to kill someone just for the purpose of sanctifying Hashem's name, so someone by the name of Zimri is not going to desecrate Hashem's name by being with a non-Jew, Cosby, the daughter of Zu, and public and obviously taking Allah into his own hands. Pinchas kills them and Hashem rewards him greatly. As we've mentioned several times, there's no end to the reward that Pinchas got, not only in this world and the next. But another thing that I want to focus on today is actually the, the, the words that Hashem used when He started talking about the reward that Pinchas is going to get, but not only the reward, but why He's getting it and how it can connect to us. Pinchas ben Lazar ben Aaron HaKohen eshib et chamati me'al b'nei Yisrael bekano et kinati betocham velo chiliti et b'nei Yisrael bekinati. Pinchas, the son of Elazar, son of Aaron HaKohen, turned back my wrath from upon the children of Israel when he zealously avenged my vengeance among them. So I did not consume the children of Israel in my vengeance. In this verse, chapter 25, in the book of Numbers, Bamidbal, verse 11, it says that Hashem stopped his action of consuming chas v'shalom, killing the entire nation of Israel, because Pinchas zealously avenged his vengeance. But in addition to that, Hashem added a word here that seems like it may not be relevant. It seems like it may not be necessary. He says, Kinati betocham, my vengeance among them. He could have just said, my vengeance. He could have just said, Kinati. Why is he saying betocham? Why is he saying among them? Which actually betocham has not only a meaning of among them, but also means within them. It's a better translation. So Chazal gives us a couple of things to to think about and how we can apply this extraordinary verse to our life. First and foremost, as we mentioned, one of the greatness, one of the things we learn about Pinchas is the fact that he fulfilled the mitzvah of you must rebuke your nation, but do not come to sin. Meaning, do not end up making a sin because of your rebuke. If you're going to rebuke your brothers, if you're going to rebuke your sisters, you're going to rebuke your nation, you must not come to sin. Meaning, you cannot get to a point where you want to rebuke somebody and tell them that they're violating Shabbat, they're intermarry, they're doing this, they're doing that, but at the same time, embarrass them in public and make one of the greatest sins you could possibly make. According to the Torah, we learned from David Melech, King David, one of the greatest people that ever lived, the fourth pillar of Hashem's Kisya Kavod, the fourth leg of Hashem's holy chair. David Melech says, if someone embarrasses another in public, has no share of the world to come. So obviously, on one end, Hashem is telling us one of the 613 commandments is to rebuke our nation, to rebuke our, our, our brothers and sisters, to save them. We have to tell them, listen, if you're making a sin, I have to let you know so you don't continue doing it. So you don't think that it's okay to drive on Shabbat. So you don't think it's okay to go date a non-Jew. So you don't think it's okay to eat at non-kosher restaurants, even if it's not meat, where a lot of people 
go to these non-kosher places and they think that they're eating kosher because it's not meat. So they figured, no, I'm just eating salad at this non-kosher place. Or I'm just eating pizza at this non-kosher place. Or I'm just having a drink at this non-kosher bar and not realizing that 99.999% of all non-kosher food, even when it's not meat, has a reason of why it's not kosher. And it's not money. The reason is because the ingredients in there are not kosher. We published a list about a year and a half ago of different ingredients they have in non-kosher food and anyone that eats any food, let alone kosher food, that reads this list will never want to eat non-kosher again, even if they're not Jewish. Because the ingredients they use, especially in the Western world, are just much disgusting. But this is not what we came here to talk about. We came here to talk about the fact that we must rebuke our people by letting them know that they are sinning, Yet at the same time, we cannot sell our soul to the devil by embarrassing them, uh, these people in public. So there's a certain way to do it. You have to do it privately. You have to do it in a, in a, in a certain way, with manners, with politeness, with careness. And Chazal tells us the reason why. Hashem is saying here that Pinchas avenge my vengeance among them. Betocham is because if you want to rebuke someone, if you want to be a zealot, you cannot consider yourself an angry person. You cannot do it out of anger, but rather it should be an act of love, not anger. Because not only is an act of love going to remove you far away from sin, but more importantly, it will be much more effective to the person that's listening. If you tell somebody, listen, my brother, my sister, I care about you. I love you. I want the best thing for you. But I also want you to know that the direction that you're going is not the right direction. According to the Torah, by driving even once on Shabbat, whether it's to the Bet Knesset or it's to the mall, it's to anywhere else, you're cutting yourself from the Jewish people. You're cutting yourself from Hashem. And I could provide you verses and I could provide you proofs. It's not a translation. It's not a chumra or a stringency. It's outright alakha. It's outright from the words of Hashem. He mentions it 12 times in the Torah. It's not a joke. And I'm telling you this because I, I want to see you in Olam Abba. I want to see you in Gan Eden one day. I don't want you to go to a bad place. I want to see you there. I want you to celebrate eternity with me. This world and the next. And when you do something out of love, even if the person is not yet ready to accept it, they'll still have an open ear the next time you talk. But if you're yelling at them and you're insulting them and you're one of these crazy people that pretends to be religious, that starts throwing rocks at people, in the middle of the street because they're not keeping Shabbat or starts yelling or spitting at women because they're not modest or starts acting like an animal because people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, that person doesn't realize that he is worse off than them. We're not animals. We're not psychopaths. We're a civilized nation that is called the chosen people. We are obligated as Jews to be a light to the nations. What kind of light are you if you're throwing rocks or yelling at people in the middle of the street? Yes, there's a way to rebuke people. Yes, the word rebuke in English sounds like an aggressive bad word, but it doesn't need to be. What it actually means is to tell people the truth, even if it hurts a little bit. Especially if it hurts the confidence, because you're telling someone that everything that they know is wrong. But there's a way to do it. And Hashem is telling us that the first meaning here is that if you're going to rebuke, you have to do it out of love. So even though the most aggressive thing that Pinchas could have ever done, which is kill somebody, seems like a, an angry act, it was actually an act of love. A love for Hashem and protecting His name and making sure that everyone knows that Hashem is number one, even beyond our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our wives, our husbands, our everything. He's always number one. That's why it's the first commandment out of ten. 
But aside from that, a love for the nation of Israel. Because if Pinchas wouldn't have done it, as Hashem said, I would have consumed the children of Israel. I would have killed everyone. Pinchas knew where this was going. Pinchas knew the outcome of this terrible act. So to save them, he did an act that looked like it was going to hurt them. But in reality, when Hashem publicized what he actually did, the people realized and they celebrated Pinchas' name. And that's why he was the leader of the war against the Midianites in this week's parasha. But the second thing that it means, the second translation that we have from Pinchas, is even more extraordinary. When Hashem is telling us that Pinchas avenged my name, avenged my vengeance among them, Kinati betucham, He's telling us a secret. Anytime you're not getting your way, or what you think is your way, you're losing money, you're having problems with Shlom Bayit and your wife doesn't like you or your husband doesn't like you anymore, or you're not getting along, or you're arguing, or the kids are not passing in school, they're not doing well in life in general, or you don't feel well and you have a sickness, chas v'shalom, or anything that's not going your way because you can't find your shiduch and you can't find a job and the endless amount of problems that Ami said is reporting every single second. Something is not going your way. Hashem is telling you, you have to check Betocham. The reason why there is a vengeance here, the reason why I am angry is because there's something wrong within them. There's something wrong betocham. Your connection with Hashem Itbarach is not good. Your connection with Hashem Itbarach is spoiled. You're doing something wrong. Before you start complaining to Hashem of why you're doing this to me, why don't you check betocham first? Why don't you check what's inside you? Hashem gave us 613 commandments and the sages added another seven. So we have 620 commandments that we have to fulfill, most of which we cannot do because it's relevant to the Bet HaMikdash. But nonetheless, Hashem gave us everything that we can do. And for anyone that says, how could the sages add seven mitzvot to the Torah? I mean, doesn't it say that you're not allowed to add or subtract from the Torah? Where it also says in the Torah, where Hashem specifically instructs the sages, instructs Am Yisrael, the leaders of Am Yisrael, to put a fence around his fence. But nonetheless, Hashem gave us all of these commandments and He said, if you do my will, I will do your will. In the Mishnah Pirkei Avot, it specifically states, if you make His will into your will, He will make your will into His mm -hmm. A few months ago, I had a person that came to me and people are asking me an update about this story. When, he, when I got this email, I was mamash reliving my story as I said in one of my lectures where someone came to me and said, listen, I've lost everything I have. I became sick. I'm in pain 24 hours a day. And I've gotten to the point where I don't know what to do with myself anymore. I'm struggling 24 hours a day and I don't know what to do. And then I clicked, for some reason, I clicked on a link that took me to TorahAnytime.com, which I don't, I'm not an observant Jew, but I decided to maybe go seek something. Go seek God and I saw your lecture. Your lecture of your personal story. That's called, Hashem took my millions and He gave me a Munai instead. And I watched the shiur and I said, If anyone can save me, he can, because he lived what I'm living. Well, anyway, as the story goes, we had a conversation. And I used this opportunity to tell this Jew that it's time for him to do tshuva. The problem is not with Hashem. The problem is not with his body. The problem is not with his business. 
The problem is betocham. The problem is within him. The problem is that the connection he once had with Hashem Barach is spoiled. It's rotten. Because according to Hashem, there's no such thing that happens for a bad reason. Just like Nachum Ish Gamzu said in the Gemara, Masechet Ta'anit, page 21a, Gamzu Tova, this too is for the good, meaning that Hashem does not do anything for the bad. The sickness, the loss of money, the pain, the agony, the, the, everything cannot be for no reason. There has to be a good here, which means that everything that's happening to you, there's something good in it. So even the, the fact that you are not complying with what the Torah says in the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to sanctify it, meaning that you have to observe the Shabbat. Even though you're not doing that, and you're not doing pretty much anything else, Hashem is doing this for you. And I took this opportunity to let him know that if he wants Hashem to fix his life, he has to fix the betucham. He has to fix the within him. He has to start fixing this broken relationship. He has to start making Hashem's will into his will. And Hashem has no end of what he can do. I told him about Shabbat and I told him about Tefillin and I told him that he has to eat kosher all the time inside the house, outside of the house. There's no such thing as non-kosher. And I told him all of the basic things that we must keep right now. There's no such thing as, no, listen, just start small and we'll build from there. No, there are basic covenants that you must keep as a Jew. You must keep Shabbat. You must lay Tefillin six days a week. You must eat kosher all the time. If you are married, you must keep family purity. If you're not married, you're not allowed under any condition ever to waste seed. All of these basic things, and obviously many more, that completely threw his life upside down all of a sudden. He's saying, wait a minute. You're telling me I have to do all of this? Why? And then we went verse by verse in the Torah, of how Hashem specifically states that when you don't do these things, there is a very heavy punishment. If you look at Parashat Bechukotai, you look at Parashat Kitavo, you can look at Parashat Vayit Hanan, you can look at half of the Torah, Hashem specifically talks about punishment for not doing His will. And at the end of the call, He tells me, I didn't tell you this during the message, but... Before this call, before I sent you the email, I was thinking that I can't do this anymore. I can't live in pain all the time anymore. I'm going to have to start planning to kill myself. But then I said, you know what, let me just try making this one phone call and see where it takes me. Now that you've told me everything that is written in the Torah, you've told me why this is happening. You've given me a diagnosis and even though the diagnosis is hard, it means that I have to change my life. At least for the first time in the last couple of years of suffering agony, I finally have a diagnosis. I finally know why it's happening. And now that I know why it's happening, I also know that there's a solution. And now I can't wait to wake up tomorrow. People ask me all the time, what happened to this man? What happened to him? Well, I'm glad to tell you that I got a message from him today, just a few hours ago, that made me cry. Because he sent me a message, and he says, I remember when we first reached, when I first reached out to you. I told you that the only, that only you can save my life. Obviously, he's referring to Hashem. He's not talking about somebody like me. I just gave him the truth. Well, my depression is gone. I am happy and no longer dwelling on my past mistakes. As you advised, I did not take the job at the restaurant working on Shabbat as you stated. You told me that Hashem will take care of me. True to those words and out of the blue without me even searching. An opportunity came across my way to move to Florida and work for a certain healthcare company I'm not mentioning for the, per for the purpose of privacy. 
in order to run a food and beverage operation in a hospital. The normal hours are 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and the weekends are off. No working on Shabbat. I have went through all of the interview process and they're flying me down on Sunday to meet with the client. Also, my back pain has subsided enormously without any medical procedures, Baruch Hashem. Thank you for changing my life. You see, my brothers and sisters, this has nothing to do with me. Nothing. If you read the Torah, you would do the same thing. If you told what Hashem said, you'd be able to do the same thing. In the book of Proverbs, Shlomo Amelech, the wisest man of all time, said this exact advice. In chapter 3, verse 5, he said, Trust in Hashem, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not rely upon your understanding. Yes, it may not make sense to you rationally why keeping Shabbat is such a big deal. You can watch your number 50 that I have and I'll tell you why it's a big deal. But nonetheless, until you watch it, if it doesn't make sense to you, why him keeping Shabbat all of a sudden, all of a sudden healed his wounds, healed his financial situation? How could this be? Why does Hashem care so much about you eating kosher? Because Hashem specifically said also in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, Know Him, meaning Hashem, in all your ways and He will direct your paths. Once you have an understanding of what Hashem is all about, what He wants from you, why He brought you into this world, you have nothing to worry about anymore. He will direct your path. He'll find you a job. He'll find you health. He'll find you a zivug. He'll find you everything. As long as you have no other gods... In his presence, as it says in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 5, meaning not the God of money and not the false gods and not anything else. He'll take care of everything for you. And then in Proverbs, again, chapter 2, verse 24, he says, If you lie down, you shall not fear. And when you lie down, your sleep shall be sweet. Meaning that once you're doing my will, once you're doing everything that I told you, you have nothing to worry about. You go lay down. You go to sleep at night. You know that I'm, I'm doing everything for you. You have nothing to worry about. This, my friends, is just the beginning of the salvation from Hashem. And if we could learn anything from this story, if we could learn anything from all of these shiurim, if we could learn anything from one of the greatest men that ever lived, Pinchas, it's not about just fulfilling mitzvot and being a robot. It's not about just saying thank you to Hashem but not really meaning it. It's about checking ourselves on a day-to-day basis and looking inside and asking ourselves, am I truly righteous with Hashem? Do I really deserve what I want from Hashem and even what I'm getting? Once you do that, then your tshuva has begun. May Hashem continue to bless you and give you true, true connection with Hashem Itbarach and many, many more miracles. Kotuf.